Good evening everyone, welcome to day 29 of the 40 Days of Hope, a message tonight that God can help you not to worry about what others think. I also hope that many of you will be encouraged after listening in that God can help you also to actually enjoy and find purpose in boring tasks that we have to do every day. I'd just like to share a little story. I had a conversation with my three-year-old earlier today. She used to bite her nails, so they were always very short. But recently she stopped the habit, thankfully, but now we actually have a new problem because, you know, um, we'd scrub her nails in the evening time to make them clean. And then the next day if we're playing with Play-Doh or she'd be out in the mud and they're all dirty again and we're back to scrubbing them again. Um, you know, I talked to her tonight, she hates nail clippers. And I said, you know, can we please just chop, um, cut your nails? Um, you'll be going to school tomorrow, you know, and people will be seeing the dirt underneath your nails and they would be wondering, they would be thinking mommy doesn't look after you, you know, and that you're not clean. And you know, she responded to me as quick as anything. She said, mommy, that doesn't worry me, that only worries you. Put in my place by a three-year-old. I could not believe it. But you know, the irony of the whole, this whole story is that Mark had been looking after the children earlier that day and I had actually gone up to read what you'd been reading in Corinthians on Saturday night. And I suppose I jotted down ideas for this talk, which is basically all about making sure we don't worry what others think and we only worry about what God thinks. And then here's here I was, basically my three-year-old pointing out my complete hypocrisy of how I was behaving only moments later. And you know, it just made me quite aware that we can be doing this subconsciously to our children, you know. Um, I definitely know that I'll be more aware now in future and I won't be telling her not to do something for fear of what others think, you know. That's definitely not... Um, a thought pattern that I want to be teaching her and you know I was unaware about unaware of it really till tonight okay so the first one I'd like to comment on is one second yeah okay is from Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 Paul says I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court indeed I do not even judge myself my conscience is clear but that does not make me innocent it is the Lord who judges me Right, so firstly, um, I suppose Paul is just making it clear that he doesn't care what people think of him. You know, he, knew, he knows how God sees him and he knows that God sees his heart. But he also says this, which I find is very interesting. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. When I was walking with the Lord um, many, many years ago, you know, I used to always think that actually, if my conscience was clear, that was the Holy Spirit telling me that the way I was living my life was okay. But you know, looking back, there are actually things that I thought maybe five years ago that I disagree with now. Um, I suppose as I've been walking with the Lord for longer and getting him to know him better and getting him to know his ways better. You know, I think that we can have clear consciences and that still doesn't make something right. You know, we have to be constantly looking into God's word, the Bible, you know, and testing things and testing, I suppose, asking God to reveal our motives in things. And you know, sometimes when we're not walking closely with the Lord, you know, our hearts can become more hardened and we can become less sensitive to, I suppose, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us um, as well. Okay, and the next thing I'd like to comment is on another verse, which I think um, relates to this too. And this is probably the verse that I um, would think about um, a lot throughout the week, you know, and it would definitely gives me a lot of purpose in my life. And it's from Colossians chapter three, verse 20 to, uh, 23. And it says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. You know, how does this play out in my life and give me purpose? I might be at work and be told to do a job, which I think is totally pointless. I do not see the value in it and how it benefits my students. However, I am not my boss and I don't see the bigger picture and I'm aware of that too. But you know, when I'm given those tasks, you know, I pray and I say, God, I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing it for anyone else, you know. And in that moment, I believe that when we're obedient to God, it's actually a form of worship. You know, when we're doing something for him, it's a form of praising him and acknowledging him. You know, and I suppose I turn that job into um, to connecting, I suppose, with God in a way. You know, when I'm at home and I'm doing some jobs that, you know, I really dislike, sometimes I might just put on a worship music or listen to a sermon or, you know, I might just use the time to pray and thank God for things. You know, again, turning the situation around and actually just connecting with God. And sometimes it can be just um, Mark and I completely clash with our ideal home. You know, Mark is happy to live in a mess and I'm not. Who's right? Who is um, more right? Is, are we right to have a messy home or a clean home? I don't know. I suppose I think we both need to come to a compromise. And I suppose when I'm meeting my compromise, sometimes I can resent that you know when I'm cleaning up a bit of a trail that he likes to leave um, but you know so I just pray in those moments you know God I'm working it for you I'm doing this for you and you know definitely in our house and um, through these verses you know how God challenges me I think he brings a lot of peace into our house <laughs> through these and um, how else does it play out in my life and um, I suppose one big way would be actually um, and this is supposed to help you explain I was actually listening to the end of a 
of an interview with Pierce Morgan and Colleen Nolan, I think it was at the weekend, and Pierce actually set Colleen a question, I think it's a good question for all of us at the end, he said, if you were given three words for people to remember, remember you by, what would it be? You know, and she was kind of a bit, I think she was a bit starstruck by the question, she didn't really know how, you know, three words for people to remember you by. And you know, um, if I was given that, you know, well, how do I want to be remembered? Genuinely, the first thing that came to my, he my head was, loved Jesus Christ, that is genuinely how I want to be remembered. And you know, um, these verses about not caring what other people think, you know, I'm so proud, proud to say I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus actually says, anyone who acknowledges me before man, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And you know, that gives me great confidence, you know, whenever I, whenever I uh, meet God in heaven, you know, I know that Jesus will be right there saying, I know Bernie. Even stepping out for the 40 days of hope. How did these verses working God and not for humans give me, I suppose, comfort? You know, I was definitely scared that I'd be, I'd be ridiculed. You know, it was vanity was a big thing. You know, um, you know, wanting people to think that I'm not actually crazy. You know, these were things, but I just had to give them to God and actually say, you know, I have to just be obedient to you, Lord. Um, yeah, so another wee verse that I'd like to um, actually talk about quickly as well was is from John. Okay, yeah, so John, okay, and this kind of says that Jesus said that he, Jesus performed loads of miracles and even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they would still not believe in him. All right, so that's from John chapter 12, verse 37. You know, very aware that when I'm sharing in the 40 days of hope, there's many that just going to think it's ridiculous, you know, even if I had full of miracles and I was doing all these, um, like showing you loads of miracles that I'd um, listened to throughout my life and seen in my life, you know, um, many of you would still not believe. But this is a key verse here, okay? Um, yet, at the same time, this is verse 42, many even among the leaders believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than praise from God. All right, and I, I just want to encourage any of you there, if you do have a faith, but you're just too afraid to share it, too afraid to acknowledge it, even it might be to a partner, to your family, you know, I think fear of actually, um, what others think will hold us in chains and stop us from actually um, fulfilling and living out the life that God has for us, which is a life full of uh, peace, joy, love, you know, a purpose and fulfillment, you know. So I just encourage you, if that's you, you know, just pray to the Holy Spirit to give you courage, just to be real and not to worry what other people think and just to know that he sees everything that you do and sees your heart. Okay, thanks for listening, guys.